For the congressman who's been a forthright opponent of the war in Iraq, it was another honest assessment from his point of view on conditions in Iraq. For the right wing, it was a chance to paint him as a hypocrite and to renew fallacious charges that the Democrats are threatening to cut off funds to the troops in Iraq. Our fourth story on the countdown, Congressman Jack Murtha says, in essence, the surge is working militarily, but not working politically. That the troops are doing their job, but the Iraqi government is not doing its. Congressman Murtha's comments came after he returned from a trip last week to Iraq and other countries in the region. I think the surge is working, but that's only one element, he said in a teleconference to reporters in four cities. It's working because of the increase in troops, but the thing that has to happen is that the Iraqis have to do this themselves. And Murtha said in the same teleconference that the Iraqi central government was, quote, pretty close to dysfunctional and that, quote, we can no longer afford to spend $14 billion a month on the war. But right-wing blogs called Murtha a hypocrite who now supports the surge. And the House Republican whip, Roy Blunt, did his part, presaging, no doubt, the disingenuously laid argument to come. With one of the Democrats' leading war critics now saying the surge in Iraq is working, it's difficult to understand why the majority continues to push an irresponsible withdrawal plan that jeopardizes critical support funding for our troops. This afternoon, Mr. Murtha said in a statement that, quote, the military surge has created a window of opportunity for the Iraqi government. Unfortunately, the sacrifice of our troops has not been met by the Iraqi government. Let's bring in John Soltz, who served as an Army captain in Iraq in 2003 and is currently the chair of VoteVets.org. John, good evening. Thank you. How are you, Keith? Congressman Murtha's office issued that statement, um, part of which I just read, as, as if to clarify something that had only been distorted by people who wanted to distort it. I mean, it, hasn't it been clear, even to supporters of the surge, supporters of the war, that there were two aspects to the surge, what would happen militarily, and the opportunity and the mandate that it created for the Iraqis politically? Yeah, I mean, obviously here they're, they're spinning Jack Murtha's thought. I mean, we, we learn very young as Army officers... <laughs> when we study uh, military strategy that, according to Clausewitz, that war is politics by other means. And what we really need here from the surge is a political success of Iraqi reconciliation and reconciliation across the Middle East. And it, look, this is no surprise that when you put, you know, five combat brigades in Baghdad, 15 to 16,000 of the best fighting men and women in the world inside of, uh, you know, the city streets of Baghdad, you're going to you're going to control terrain. I mean, they're the best in the world. That's what we expect. But we've seen no political progress. And, you know, this is their ability to try to spin what Jack Martha said, you know, the same way they use Ken Pollack and Michael Hanlon statements when they came home, uh, to try to support a, a surge that were, you know, basically declining anyway. I mean, 1st Cavalry Division is pulling a brigade out of northern uh, Iraq as we speak, and they're not replacing it. So the surge is basically, it's on the downside now, and, and we've seen no political progress, and it is what it is. First First time, last time that uh, that the credentials of Jack Murtha and Michael O'Hanlon had even been compared, <laughs> let alone uh, been considered close. Um, if the surge is, is is as you point out due to end anyway, the argument over the military success of it, it becomes less relevant, does it not? I mean, when, when the focus should be how best you deal with a government that hasn't come anywhere close to the kind of political reconciliation that's necessary. Well, in, in Kosovo and Bosnia and Haiti and, and and many wars in this country, we use military force to create political leverage. The threat of going in to get a political reconciliation, or the threat of going out to get political reconciliation. This administration has done neither, so it's it's a really you know big problem. And the point with the surge ending is is twofold. One. The American army has been decimated by this administration. You know, when George Bush ran for president in 2004, he argued that we didn't need to increase the size of the army. When he became president in 2000, he wanted to go from 10 combat divisions to eight. So we have to pull these brigades out anyway. So, you know, they're, they're, there's nowhere else to go. And the second part of it is that this is a political strategy on behalf of the White House not to lose the war in Iraq. But it's not a strategy to win the war in Iraq. And that's just not good enough when you have the best army in the world over there fighting. Because the president, he just doesn't want to lose, but he has no strategy to win. Yeah, that, that, to, to that point of expectations, John, I mean, the, the reaction to Murtha seems to be uh, as if this was a final score, as if there were a surrender on, on board the, uh, uh, the, the Missouri after World War II. Oh, boy, Murtha said the surge is working. Um, erase the rest of his sentence, and that's it. That's all those who want this war want is for somebody to say, yeah, we had a military success there or relative military success over the last three months by adding a number of troops. See, it's, it's not the end all for the soldiers that are in Iraq or the American public that knows Osama bin Laden, the man who attacked this country on 9-11, is sitting in a country that's, you know, about to fall apart and has a nuclear weapon in Pakistan. And that's a humongous, obvious concern here. For the Republicans and the president, this is the final straw for them. They're concerned about getting you know, clocked in the, mid, or in the in the election next year, the Senate and the in the House, the Republicans look to lose seats on both sides, and, and possibly the White House. So, for the president, it, it is an end all. His only strategy here 
is to not lose, which is to punt the football on the war in Iraq to the next president. John Soltz, co-founder and chairman of VoteVets.org. As always, John, great thanks. Have a good weekend. Thanks for having me.